life. Grab your Bibles, and if you would, go with me to John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. I'm going to start right there. Last week, we talked about the importance of cultivating your seed, cultivating your seed, developing the seed that God's given to you to work. Uh, When God is doing a new thing in your life, he always starts with a seed. Can somebody say amen? He always starts with a seed. That's why the Bible says, don't despise the day of small beginnings because God is a God that starts with the seed. He always starts with a seed and then he expects you to cultivate and develop and to steward what he has given to you to do. So I want to start here because I talked last week a little bit about the importance of dealing with arguments and how when God speaks a new thing into your life, there will always be an argument that Satan sends your way. And I want to ask this question because I'm going to guess that a lot of people may not have done it. And it's okay, you don't have to raise your hand either way. But how many of y'all wrote down your professions for this week? Did you develop the things that God is doing new in your life? Remember we talked about how when God brings you out of something, there is always a muscle memory from bad behaviors of the past. So the fact that God sets you free does not mean you are free indeed. Because free indeed is when you renew your mind to why he set you free. Can somebody say amen? I can bring, you ever heard the city, uh, the the, uh, statement that people have said, you can take the man or woman out of the streets, but you can't take the street out of the man or woman? Well, God can take you out of Egypt, but he can't take the world out of you. That is your job. Can somebody say amen? Turn me down just a little bit, just a little bit in this mic. Uh, I, I need you to understand that because a lot of people can get set free, but then they're not free indeed because they don't know how to renew their mind. They have to renew their thinking. And God spoke to us a couple of weeks ago and said that the strong man has been bound, that there is a new season that we are coming to, that we are stepping into. And before you go, I want you all to understand, this is our Jubilee Saturday, we have been declaring jubilee in all of 2023, and we are going to pray over every person that needs a breakthrough, a healing, a deliverance, anything that is needed in your life, because we believe in miracles at another level. Can somebody say amen? So we're going to be praying tonight, but this is the important thing of why I'm mentioning this, is because if God sets you free, but you do nothing with your freedom, you are going to repeat the history of your past And eventually you will recreate your world again and it will look like you did. You ever seen somebody that God brings out of debt and then five, six, seven years later, sometimes even sooner than that, they're right back in debt. Why? Because even though giving somebody the freedom to be free does not make them free. Freedom has to start within. If you don't believe me, just ask a woman named Rosa Parks. Before they ever said she could sit in the front of the bus, she made up in her mind she was supposed to be in the front of the bus. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? You have to know that you're free before you're free. If you are waiting to feel free, if you're waiting for somebody to make you feel better, you're not going to be free because a man or woman can live no greater than their most dominant thought. So why are you asking me to write things down? Because I believe that God has supernaturally set some people free in here. God is supernaturally opening some doors for some people in here. But if you don't have a new profession of faith, If you do not write down what God is saying, if you are not speaking out of your mouth the word of God, you are eventually going to recreate the world that he just brought you out of. God can take you out of Egypt, put you in Timbuktu, and eventually you'll make Timbuktu look just like Egypt. Because the reality is that he can take you out, but you've got to make a decision to go in. So if you have not written down your proclamations for this week, And for this season, I need you to go home and write up some new scriptures. What has God been saying to you? What are you believing God to do in your life? And every day that you wake up, come on somebody, you need to declare out of your mouth that I am blessed and highly favored. My children are saved. My body is healed. My mind is renewed. Come on somebody. My debts are canceled. My family's going to come to know Jesus. I'm going to get married. One day I'm going to have a lot of kids. My business will succeed. My 
family is going to be blessed. Everything that I touch is going to be blessed. I'm not going to be in the same place that I am now a year from now, but things are going to change. My life is going to accelerate. My life, you got to begin to declare out of your mouth what you want God to do. Can somebody say amen? When God brings you out, he leaves it up to you to recreate the world that you want to see. God has made you so much like him that when he wanted to create the heavens and the earth, he didn't do anything but start talking. Come on, somebody. If we could just get the church to talk the right stuff, if we could get people to say the right things, everything can begin to change. God began to speak out of his mouth and called light out of darkness, commanded the trees to come forth, commanded the fish to come forth, the birds of the air to begin to soar. And from that point on, birds have been soaring ever since. The sun has been rising and setting ever since. Why? Because God purposed it in his heart and he spoke out of his mouth. If you do not change the way that you speak in this season, you will not reshape the world that God wants you to have. But you have to declare what you want God to do in this season. Can I get an amen, somebody? So it is time to speak differently than we have spoken in the past. Stop speaking about your mountains and start speaking to them. Stop speaking about what's wrong. Start declaring what you want to see. I heard it said before that you need to speak what you heard so you can see what you said. Are you hearing me? I'm going to say that again. You've got to speak what you heard so then you can see what you said. It's important that we understand that in this season. So go to John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, if you could bring that up for me, please. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Some say, if you abide. If. Isn't it amazing that God's greatest promises always have a condition with the word if. Two words that the church don't want to talk about, if and but. So you've got to have an if and a but when you have a promise from God. God says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and I will hear their land. There's two things that you have to have when you're dealing with a conditional promise, an if and a but. You've got to have both of those. That means it's conditional upon you. Can somebody say amen? If you abide. You're my disciples indeed. Next verse. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now write this down. If you are going to cultivate your seed, you have to abide in the word. If you're going to cultivate when God is growing your life, you have to abide in the word. I hope that you are taking notes, even if it's digitally. It's important that you take notes each and every day. Whenever you hear any preacher, you want to be writing down what it is. Why? Because it's God's love letter to you. He said, if you abide in my word, you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. If you abide. If you are going to grow, you have to stick with what God gave to you. The blessing of stick to itiveness. You've got to have the anointing of stick to itiveness. You've got to stay with it. One of the things I don't like to do, I don't like taking vitamins. I don't, especially the big horse ones that gag you. But, you know, you want to, I don't know about y'all, but I want to take a vitamin once or twice, and I want to see my whole life change. Are you hearing me? I, I, I mean, I, that's what I want. I'm going to take two vitamins, and, man I, man, I felt different. I can see them. Man, it's immediate change. It's over time that you begin to see the difference when you have worked, when you have abide, abode in the truth, when you abide in those vitamins, uh, that's what causes you to grow. I don't know about y'all, you, you go back, you haven't worked out in a while, then you go back and work out and you're looking in the mirror after three days. Ain't nothing changed. Matter of fact, sometimes if you start dieting and all that, as soon as you hop on the scale, what happens? You put weight on. And you're like, man, what in the world is going on? I mean, because you're looking for immediate changes. Isn't it amazing? The Bible says, if you abide, then you will become my disciples. You will become disciplined ones. Now watch this. This is important. Disciplined ones are the only ones that come into the revelation of truth. People that live a lie are not disciplined. They have no discipline of their emotions. They have no discipline of their mind. They have no discipline of their thought life. They're not disciplined, so they can never come into truth of anything because they're never rooted and grounded in anything. Isn't it amazing? Jesus said, if you abide, now you are a disciple. You are a disciplined one. 
It, it's so sad that we've heard in the church, all we hear is this greasy grace gospel. God loves you. He wants to bless you. That's all that matters. And I'm all for that. I believe that. Y'all know I believe in the blessing. I believe you're blessed from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. But don't get it twisted. People that walk in the perpetual blessing of God, they have to be disciplined in how they live. And if you do not learn how to become a disciple, you will never tap into truth. And if you can't tap into truth, you will never see your life become free. Can somebody say amen? That's the reason why you say, well, what are you doing to spiritual gifts? It's giving you more knowledge about the truth. Why do you do a cross training class every month? To give you knowledge about the truth. Why do you have a Wednesday night book on Ephesians? Because I want to teach you about truth. Why? Because with so many lies out there in our society, if we do not get a hold of truth, not only will we pay the price, our children will pay for it, and our children's children will pay for it as well. Like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. mentioned, he said, truth crushed to the ground shall rise again. If you have a hold of absolute truth, you will not bow the knee, you will not waver, you will stand strong because you are convinced that you have absolute truth. It is something that has been lost in this generation. Where are the preachers that preach absolute truth? They're not worried about taking the pulse of the people before they hear what God has to say. They're going to say what God said and leave the results up to him. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, there are some people that ain't going to like what you have to say. There are some people that ain't going to love your gospel. There's some people that ain't going to love your Bible. But you know what? Jesus loves his Bible. God wrote his Bible. He said heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will not remain. Stand upon the word, and the word will stand for you. A lot of people, oh, man, I don't know. What if people get offended? Well, the Bible gives us a clear-cut understanding of what happens when people get offended. When they get offended, it's because their deeds were evil and they love darkness rather than light. And so what do we do now? we got to water it down. we got to pamper. we got to make people feel good. We don't want people to leave the church. We don't want all this. Listen, I'd rather have a church that has Jesus than to have a bunch of people in my church and don't have no presence of God there at all. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not saying churches shouldn't grow, that there's anything wrong with growth and development. I believe that you should grow and develop. I'm all for that. But in reality, numbers don't mean presence. Come on, somebody. I tell you what, my dad, when he raised us up as children, we were coming up. I tell you what, he was one of the most disliked men. They're like, and what I mean by that is a lot of people are like, oh, you're too strict. You're doing too much. You don't need to do all that with your kids. All three of us are in the ministry together as brothers. Both of my brothers got married as virgins. Yeah. Come on. Well, why? It don't take all of that. It ain't that hard. If you abide in my word, you will be my disciples. Where are the real disciples today? And you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. What? Free from the opinions of men. Free from the world system. Free from the way the world says it ought to be done. You will know that it works. The greatest revelation a believer can ever get is to come to the revelation that the word of God will work for you. If nobody else works it, it will still work for you. Well, yeah, and still, you know, I don't know about all that's why we got to preach the truth. Because that's what will cause people to stand in this day and in this hour. Can somebody say amen? So that's what you have to do. In order to grow and to develop, you have to make a decision to abide. You've got to find out what God is saying to you, and then you have to stick with it in Jesus' name. Go to James chapter 5, verse number 7. James chapter 5, verse number 7. Go there quickly. I want you to catch this. I'm going to move as fast as I can so then you can get a hold of this and you will be able to grow and develop. Can somebody say amen? amen? I want you to grow. I don't want you just to show up in church and have an emotional experience, because I'm telling you what, ladies and gentlemen, hear this preacher well, the going will get rough in your walk with God. Can I get a witness? And the only thing that will stand is what you have built your life upon. If you build it upon a church social club, good luck. If you build it upon a, an emotional experience, good luck. If you build it upon some personality cult that somebody developed, good luck. But if you build it upon the word, if everybody leaves you, come on, somebody. Jesus had nobody left but his mama and his brother at the foot of the cross. And the very word that everybody ran from is the very thing that resurrected his life. 
Are you hearing me today? Everybody can leave you, and that word will still keep you coming. Hallelujah. You better have some word in your life. That's what causes you to stand in Jesus' name. All right, I'm not going to preach anymore. James chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits. Somebody say, wait. For the precious fruit of the earth, wait. Somebody say, waiting. Patiently for it until it receives the early and the latter rain. Now stop there. See, look at this here. Be patient, wait, wait patiently until you receive the early and the latter rain. When God is growing your life, you ready? You must be patient. It ain't going to happen overnight. Now, the harvest will come overnight when it's time. But until then, you've got to be diligent and keep working your stuff. Look at your name and say, work your stuff, baby. you got to keep working your stuff. you got to stay in the weight room until you see new cuts form. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If I had time, I'd preach it like I feel it. Uh, you know, when you're working out, it, you know, you go out and you work, you work, you work, you work, you work. And then there's that day that you don't want to go to the weight room. You're like, man, I don't want to go. Have you ever gone to the weight room when you didn't want to go and you had the best workout of your life? And then you look in the mirror and this muscle comes out of you that you never, you're like, man, look at, you got to go home and get the baby oil after that one. You got to show everybody. You roll your shirt up nice and tight so they see all them new cuts and they see that shoulder. But it was on a day, watch this, it was on a day that your mind did not want to go. Are you ready? But your body was ready for breakthrough. Oh, y'all ain't going to, y'all ain't going to shout me down in here tonight. Your mind doesn't want to go. But your body was on the precipice of a breakthrough. That's the reason why it's, it's, it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. Right before you're about to hit a spiritual breakthrough, the greatest attack will be upon your mind because the breakthrough has to start in your thought life, not in the outer things. It comes from within you. And if your mind does not get free, you can't experience breakthrough in your life. So when the devil starts telling you don't go to church, you should know by now there's a breakthrough that is coming. When the devil says you're not anointed, you should know there's a breakthrough coming. When the devil says you're not going to get married, you should know a breakthrough is coming. No matter what comes up against you, the lie only shows up because the truth is ready to be revealed. And that's why a lot of people never make it because they allow their emotions and their feelings to dictate and chart the course for their life instead of waiting patiently and abiding. Be patient while God's working it out. But what if I don't feel it, Pastor Jay? Be patient. Don't get in a hurry. Development takes time. Are you hearing me? See how the farmer waits. Some say waits. I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. David said, wait on the Lord and he shall strengthen your heart. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like an eagle. If they wait upon the Lord, what am I waiting for? The promise to manifest in my life. God, you gave me a word. I'm going to wait on it. I know I don't feel it. I know I don't sense it. I don't feel like doing it. But when I feel that way, today just might be the day. Hallelujah. God can change anything at any moment if people will wait for him. See, we have to learn how to develop growth, and we want it immediately. Now, don't get me wrong. When it's time, it happens immediately. But until it's time, it doesn't happen immediately. It takes time to get there. And that's what we don't like. We don't want to wait. I want it now. I want it my, I told you, you get that J.G. Wentworth anointing. It's my money and I want it now. You want it right now in your life. And I get it, I want it too. I don't want to wait. But it's not Bible to be in a hurry. Are you hearing me? It takes time in order to see the harvest that God has for your life. Go to Galatians chapter 6, verse number 9, real quickly. I'm giving you more scripture now than I probably ever have in my life. Why? Because if you don't have the word, you don't have anything else. 
You've got to have the scripture. He said, what should I study, Pastor Jay? I'm giving you a bunch of stuff you can read all day, every day. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, we shall reap if we don't lose heart. Wait again. The Bible is full of places where people had to wait upon the Lord. And then he strengthens you. He revives you. He renews you. He refreshes you. He uplifts you. He gives you what it is that you need in those moments. Remember that it's seed, then, and then. So remember, I like to call it seed time. It's the time that you're working your seed. And I'm going to say it again because the Lord spoke to me this afternoon. He said, tell my people there are two major enemies that will come against the harvest. One, you can read about them in Mark chapter 4. Number one is when it fell upon the stony ground. The Bible says that tribulation and persecution came because of the word, and immediately many became offended. Can I say this? I say this all the time, but people never get it. I'm going to say this again. God never uses offense to shift you. Are you hearing me? There is no place where he'll say, blessed are those that are offended, for they shall be promoted. The Bible warns that offense is the tool of Satan. Why? Watch this. Are you ready? Offense moves you out of position. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. It moves you out of position. It takes you out of where you should be and where you're going and puts you where you think you want to be and puts you where you don't want to go. God never uses offense. Look at your name and say, God never uses it. You know what's amazing? I'll preach this a million and one times, and then somebody will go to somebody in the church and say, oh, I'm so offended. The Lord led me to another place. God never uses it. Can somebody say amen? Two things. Stony ground, he said they get offended, they uproot themselves. The other thing is thorny ground. Some say thorny ground. This is what I want to hit for just a moment. Thorny ground is important to understand that because that talks about how the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of rich, for riches and other things creep in and choke the word. Watch this. You get distracted with stuff that should not take priority in your heart. And as a result, it chokes out the word and you stop doing what God asked you to do because you're distracted with things that you think are more important. Are you hearing me? When God is growing your life, be careful of the thorns and be careful of the stones. Be careful of those things because they will move you into a place where you don't want to go. Hallelujah. So be patient. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because I got to keep moving. So we talked about last week the importance of defeating the argument and how whenever God speaks a word of truth, there will always be a lie of the enemy that will come to argue with you in your mind. This is the reason why I'm moving now to the fullness of my message here tonight. You must get to a point where you start renewing your mind. Now, I want to go a step further. I want to go a step further. How do I know when my mind has been renewed? You ready? What do you say in season and out of season? If your words have not changed, your mind is not different. How do I know when I'm changing? Are you ready? Because you will have to speak against what you feel. How do I know I'm embracing growth in my life? Because I will have to speak against what I feel. Now watch this. Please hear me. One of the greatest weapons that Satan will bring into your life, he'll bring a fog of confusion into your world to where you don't know what's up, what's down, what's left, what's right, because this is the season when your emotions must become disciplined, your mind must become disciplined, and that's why you got to write it down in the good time, because when you get into a fog and you don't know where to go and you don't know what's next, you can go back and take your mind and your emotions and say, this is what the Spirit of the Lord said, and you are burning that into the hard drive of your mind. You'll hit seasons when you don't know what's up and down. You'll get up in the morning and say, I have no idea what I need to do today. God already showed you. But now you're in a fog of confusion because you have not, watch this, stewarded your truth. Remember what I said, God starts with the seed, but the rest is up to you. 
The seed has life within itself, has the harvest within itself. It has everything that you'll ever need. Are you working your seed? Are you working it? Now did you write it down just once? Are you working your seed? Now watch this, this is important because if you don't start changing what you speak, nothing is changing in your heart. It starts with what you say. Write up your plan. This is what I'm believing God for. This is what he told me to do. This is what I'm writing it down, and every day I remind myself, God, this is what I'm saying. God, this is what I'm doing. God, I'm believing. And then when you hit that fog, anybody know what I'm talking about? Hit a fog. You ever hit a fog in your life where you wake up, you're just kind of like lost. You ever wake up and feel like your emotions are just all jacked up? You're anxious, don't even know why you're anxious. You're struggling, don't even know why you're struggling. You wake up, you're like, why do I feel just something isn't right? This is where the adversaries come in with the thorns and the stones to try to get you to not shift your thinking. Good God Almighty. Do you understand the power of words are so great that you can speak to someone that's on their deathbed, have stage four cancer riddled in their body, and they can pick themselves up and say, I will live, and they'll live a lot longer just simply because they said, I will live. Three words can keep you alive. So the devil doesn't want you to talk. And you know what we do? We get so focused on our feelings. We get so focused on our emotions. We get so focused on all these things that we forget everything that God told us to do. And then the devil, watch this. Are you ready? He will always give you a lie to attach to a faulty emotion. So you wake up feeling anxious. Then you start saying, maybe my money's funny and my change is strange. You wake up feeling anxious and you'll start looking. Watch this. For something dependent to. You ready? Emotions are always secondary. If you ever study cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, they teach you a thing called rational emotive behavior therapy. Stages of change. They take people that are in addiction and they take them through a process because people that are addicts many times live predominantly by their feelings and they throw rational thought out. And so when they get into sobriety, they have to teach themselves not to allow their feelings and attach our rational thoughts to feelings, but they have to learn to say, okay, I'm feeling this. It's real, but it's not a governor. Just because I'm anxious doesn't mean I have anxiety. Just because I feel terror doesn't mean I am fearful. Just because I feel sick doesn't mean I am sick. God never gave you a feeling. He gave you his word. And if you will work his word, it will shift your feelings. And when you shift your feelings, everything will change from that point forward. The number one miracle that happens in any believer's life is when they stop living by their feelings. People, are, people want a miracle. We should have a miracle deliverance from myself, my own feelings, my own emotions. They're not wrong. I don't want anybody to feel condemned. They are not meant to be governors. You have to learn to identify your feelings long before they identify you. You have to learn it. You have to learn. You'll wake up in the morning and feel anx anxious. Whoa, 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 whoa. If you're showing up with all that stuff, what is the devil after? Have you ever thought about it like that? When you wake up and feel all hell breaking loose, depression raising upon your life, start looking out today, tomorrow, and the next few days, and ask yourself, is anything good about to happen? Is there something, is there an appointment, Jesus help me, with a blessing that the devil's trying to destroy my life? You wake up in the middle of the night and you can't sleep. Is there anything coming up the next morning that says you are anointed for the conflict of the enemy? Many times when you're up in the morning and up early, late at night and up early in the morning, it's not that there's something wrong with you. The devil is scared. But watch this. The devil is a master at deceiving people in their own identity. He'll feel fear and put it on you. The spirit of fear comes all the way around you engulfs himself around you, and then he'll whisper a lie in your ear. And because you feel it, it must be true, right? I'm always going to be broke. I felt it. My mama felt it, and she died. My granddaddy felt it, he died. Well, just because you feel something, it's, watch this, whatever dominates 
your thinking dominates your destiny. You have to identify the spirit. Now watch this. Spirits have personalities. Have you ever met somebody who said, I didn't like their spirit? That's a person you didn't like. A spirit is not some lofty little, no, no, no. If they have a feeling, it's because they possess a personality that comes with them. If they can bring fear to you, that means there are words attached to the feeling. And if you don't identify the lies, if you don't identify that you're not battling against mom and dad, but there is a spirit that is lying to you that you have learned bad muscle memory. Yeah, we, we've learned it. So we can have certain things that happen. There's a chain of events, and then we fall into a cliff, off of a cliff. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You can wake up in the morning, and you have to, you know, you have to eventually wise up and say, okay, devil, somebody's got a new T-shirt. I don't know who it was. I saw a guy that, back in Olean. He has a shirt, and he says, not today, Satan. I want to get one that says, no silly rabbit, tricks are for kids. And I use this all the time, but it's so true. That rabbit, the kids played the same. He would get right to the point where he's about to put it in his mouth, and the kids would steal it from him. No silly rabbit. Tricks are for kids. You know what I would do? When I saw them kids running, I'd been taken off running. I said, next time them kids show up, I'm going to have me a front line of defense. I'm going to do something because I know the end of the story. They're going to come and steal my bowl of tricks. But we, the devil does it to us all the time. Because why? Somebody say muscle memory. He knows exactly what to do. He knows exactly how to trip you up. He knows exactly how to get you to stumble. When are we going to wake up and say, not today, Satan? Not today. You're not taking it, not one more day. Not today. It's not going to happen. Can somebody say amen? I'm saying this to you because I believe we're in a season that God said you have bound the strong man. But listen. The Bible says that once you bind the strong man, that he will go and get seven demons worse than himself. Why? He's going to come back and say, tricks are for kids. If you have not learned and changed the way you think, the devil will come back, knock on the door. Why do you think people get married four and five times? Same old thing. They're not gonna, and, they, and, they, and they believe, you know what? I'm all right. The world's all wrong. People go to 500 different churches. There are some people, I kid you not, I have preached in quite a few churches here in Pittsburgh since I've been here. And I can see, I'm like, either they're traveling to see me, or they're in every church that I'm at. And let me tell you this, the reason why I know they didn't come to see me is because they left because they didn't like me. And then I went preach, and saw, saw I was like, you were in my church six months ago. And then they went to this church, and that, they've been in four churches in the past year. And you know what? And they got the newest revelation. The Lord is leading me. It's no silly rabbit. Tricks are for kids. Can somebody say amen? I don't want to get stopped there because I didn't come to preach on church hopping today. Now look at this here. Why is this so important? Spiritual forces are coming to bring you back into bondage. Don't Look back to what God has already judged. All right. Remember the story of Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah? The angel comes, pulls them out. But what does he say? Don't look back. Now, why, why is not looking back so important? Because your mind is still there. And then the Bible says Lot's wife looked back, and when she did, she became a pillar of salt and could no longer go forward. So watch this, watch this. If God brings you out of something and you don't take your mind out of where you've been, you will turn into a monument. You'll never experience what God has for you because you will constantly be looking back and you will be frozen where you are because you'll never release to where you're going. Don't look back. Can somebody say amen? 
So let me ask you this question again. What are you meditating on to produce the change that you want in your life? What new scriptures have you looked up? What are you doing differently? Because listen, now watch this. Watch this. this is, I'm, I'm getting here. If you don't meditate upon the change, you will never see the breakthrough that you want to see. Joshua 1.8. A couple more scriptures. I'm almost done because I want to pray for some of y'all because I believe somebody's going to get a breakthrough in here. Somebody, now listen, this is what the Lord spoke to me. Listen to me. This is important. When you get a healing or a deliverance or a breakthrough, you better start declaring out of your mouth. When God starts speaking something to you, you just got to start declaring out of your mouth. God, I thank you today. My body's healed. I thank you, God, for my new future. God doesn't heal you to stay where you are. He heals you so you can go to where you need to be. So where are you headed? God heals you from diabetes. You can't be eating Snickers every day. God heals you from high cholesterol and high blood pressure, and you in Popeye's line every day. Got a hot wing. I mean, they got good chicken. Don't get me wrong. Y'all know I love me some Popeye's. But the reality is, I, you can ask my wife. I, I mean, I hardly ever go there anymore. You want to know why? God spoke something to me. He said, Jay, I'm not going to grace you to live unhealthy no more. Many people are in a healing line because they didn't heed God's warning when he told them, stop eating. It's the truth. And the reason why I say this, a lot of my pastor friends that were older than me, I always ran with an older crowd. They're like 20 years older than me. Some of them are passing out while they're preaching. They're finding out they're diabetic. They're finding themselves on life support. Guys are dying. And I'm like, what in the world happened to these guys? They didn't give up the Popeyes. They're still eating lard and everything else every day. Because you know church folks, especially church folks, we love to eat. Ain't nothing like a potluck dinner. You ever wonder that though? I mean, you call a prayer meeting, people scatter like roaches when the lights come on. You call a potluck dinner, you get people you never knew even existed in your city. You're like, how did they find out? So many people you don't even know, you didn't even put out a flyer, you didn't do nothing. They'd say, hey man, you all had that potluck yet? They'd be out in front of there, knocking the wimble. Like, they talking to you because they're ready to get, it's because, watch this though, why, why? Because it caters to this. The, the Witham anointing has crept into the church. What's in it for me? The cross has been removed. Witham has replaced it. You know, I'm not coming to that church if it ain't for me. I'm not going down there and stand in front of that pregnancy center if it ain't going to benefit me. I'm not going to clean the church if it don't benefit me. What happened to, if any man wants to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Where's that preaching? But then we wonder why there's no power, and it's not to beat anybody up, but the reality is we got to get back to truth. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Didn't he? It's amazing he didn't say mind. Don't depart from, what has God done? What is he saying to you? Are you speaking it still today? When you get up, are you declaring the law? But you will meditate. Why? Listen, what you meditate upon determines what comes out of your mouth. What comes out of your mouth determines what you shape and what you form. Look what it says. He said, this book of law should not depart from your mouth, but you will meditate on it day and night. That's a bad translation. It means in season and out of season. It means when things are good and when things are bad. That you may observe to do. What you see, observe means to see, to perceive, is what you will do. According to all that is written for then, you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. So the answer or the, the, the equation is in the middle, really, but that what, what you speak determines your success. Your language will determine your life. Your success will be determined by your speech because your language and your speech are derived from what you meditate upon. Now watch, I'm going to say it again. God brings you out, get into a, hair, a, a healing line, <laughs> deliver. Now you're free. The shackles are off. What's going on up here? Because if that don't shift, ain't nothing else going to shift. Eventually, you'll put the shackles on yourself. And then you'll be back in the healing line again. With instead of a three-pound ball, to be a 21-pound ball because it's seven times worse than it was before. But why? Because the devil said if they got free before, we got to double down on them now because they can get free again. 
Hallelujah. James chapter, I'm, not, I'm sorry, Psalm 1. Let's go there real quickly. I'm almost done. Psalm 1, first Psalm. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of the sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Go back to my first week I preached this. I preached all of that. Keep on going. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and what? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And it goes on to about how the ungodly are not so, but the thing that I want you to catch is that what you meditate upon determines what you get roots in. What you get roots in determines your fruit. When God is ready to do a new thing, he will plant a seed in the soil of your heart. If you will cultivate it and develop it, you will start speaking out of your mouth what you need to see. Now watch this. Why is speaking so important? Please hear me when I say this. Because what you declare will also reveal the next level for your life. Inside of your words lies revelation for future steps. So while you're speaking, God, I thank you. My life is going to be blessed. I thank you, God, that I'm not going to be single forever. I thank you, God, that my body is healed. While you're speaking it, when it goes, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. So shall be my word that proceedeth out of my mouth. It won't return back to me. Y'all ain't hearing me today. It won't return unto me void. So when I declare I'm healed, the steps for healing have to come back. That's quiet in this Presbyterian church. When I declare I'm debt free, the steps to get debt free have to come back. My word will not come back to me void. It will accomplish what I set out for it to do. I won't be single forever. Pastor Jay, get on Christian Mingle. You don't believe me? Ask my brothers. Y'all heard the story. I'm going to share it again. I don't know what year it was. Maybe it was 2010, Christmas. It was me, my two brothers, and my dad. For Christmas. Hungry man dinner style. Christmas. I looked at them guys. I said, I love y'all. But it's going to be the last Christmas. It's going to be us rusty brothers up in here. Y'all might be handsome, but you ain't cute. <laughs> I declare that on Christmas, and they can attest. My word didn't come back to me void. That January, my words, did you hear what I just said? Yeah, I'm going to be married. <laughs> Get on Christian Mingle. I'm going to be healed. <laughs> the steps come. I'm going to have a successful business. <laughs> and then it comes back to you not void, accomplishing what you have spoken. If you're not speaking nothing, nothing can come back to you. Words are like seeds. When you send them out, they come back. Don't you think people say, oh, don't get caught up in the blab it and grab it, name it and claim it. No, 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 no. Go ahead and get caught up in it. Because if you speak it out, the direction will come. You have to follow the direction to get it. But the reality is declare it or nothing is coming back to your life. I declared that on Christmas in January. By the end of January, I met her on Christian Mingle. I had preached against dating sites. I had said I would never get on them. I said they were the devil, and it's the very thing that God used to send me this wonderful woman that I have right here. Why? Because when I was sitting with the four of us, I said this will be the last Christmas. It's going to be us rusty brothers up in here. And whew, the words went out. You know what's amazing about words? You can run any way you want. They will chase you down. And it came back, and I'll never forget, it was a Sunday, I can tell you the song I was listening to. When the Holy Spirit said, Jay, I want you to go on a fast you've never gone on before. Had no idea my wife was attached to it. Went on this fast that week. By the end of the week, God spoke to me, laying on a couch watching BET, and the, the commercial for Christian Mingle came up. Why? Because my words did not come back to me void. But this is the reality. When they come back with a harvest, you got to do what they said. So when you declare, do you understand the reason why we're standing in this building right now is because we came into church and spoke and said we will be in that building. Before Grace Life even knew it was for sale, we came and prayed for this building. Came here. Marched around. I had no idea 
that one day Pastor Buck gonna come and say, hey, you need a building? We wanna help you. I said, that's the building we laid hands on. My words won't come back to me void. See, if you keep working that word, it will come back to you. Oh, Jesus, help me. I gotta move on. Last one and I'm done. Go to Mark 11, 22. Are you learning anything? This is how I've lived my life. First, four, first vehicle I got that I really, 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 really wanted. I went down. I took my wife to the place. I was down with Schultz dealership. I was in the middle of prayer with my brothers. A lot of things happened with my brother. Remember we were sitting there? And I said, <laughs> I said, God just told me to go down to the Schultz dealer and tell him that forerunner's mine. Well, I went down there, and I, I went down there, and I said, hey, where's the manager of this place? I did. I kid you not. True story. Went down there, and I said, where's the manager? No, no, no. I don't want, I want the head dog. God said, talk to the head dog. <laughs> he came out. I said, sir, I'm here on divine commission. God told me to tell you that vehicle out there belongs to me. And he looked back at me and said, well, that's great. Then tell him to give you the money for it. <laughs> Lo and behold, I ended up getting a beautiful forerunner. And you know what I did? I brought it back to him. See, listen, I didn't get it from him. I got it from somebody else. And let me say this. Paid it off early. Made money off it. Had the forerunner of my dreams. God blessed me supernaturally. And I drove it right down there and said, where the head dog? And brought him out there and showed him my forerunner. Why? So shall be my word that goes out of my mouth. My son, who uh, y'all saw up here worshiping, doctor came to me and said, hey, your son's going to die. There's no heartbeat. The pregnancy hormones are going through the roof by now. We should have seen a heartbeat, but don't worry. It's okay. You guys can have many more opportunities to be able to have a child. I look back at that doctor right in the middle of that child. I talk back to people. I don't know about y'all. I don't just let people speak stuff over my life. People say stuff with you, so shall be their words that goeth out of their mouth. You let that stuff stick to you, you'll reap a harvest from that stuff. Immediately, she was right there with me. I said, no, 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 excuse me, doctor. With all due respect, God said now. He looked back at my wife and said, man, I need people like that in my life. They have that type of faith. This is the doctor. We went home, and I'll never forget. This is for somebody. Somebody needs to understand where we're going tonight. I remember we went home, and this depression fell over our house. And I felt all this fear come up. I walked through that house. I can show you pictures of it right now. I have it on my phone. I walked up and my wife was cooking in the, and I'm declaring, Father, I thank you today. Y'all better hear what I'm saying because somebody needs to get a breakthrough in here. And if you don't declare it, the devil going to steal it. I started walking back and forth and up and down. I said, God, I thank you. You told me a word I'll never forget. We were sitting in the middle of a conference, and the Lord said, lay your hands on your wife's belly. See, that's why sometimes you may think it's foolish to do what, why am I doing this? Just do what he told you to do. That's right. Amen. You don't know what might happen. You don't know whose life might be changed. You don't know what breakthrough might happen. I laid my hands on my wife's belly, and I said, I declare my children are prophetic and that they are blessed. You want to know what happened? When that doctor said they got to die and cannot live, my words were coming back to me that said my kids were blessed. And I began to walk up and down and said, it's time to harvest the words that you have spoken. And I said, my son will live. I declare his heartbeat will be there. And I declared it to the point where I didn't even need to see the ultrasound. I was sitting in that doctor said, I don't even need to go in there. And the moment they put that problem on her belly, all we heard was, and that heart began to beat, and I said, I don't even need to see it. I got my breakthrough before I ever got there because my words created my world. Yeah, that's right. Don't tell me. I've lived this thing. I've declared stuff, and we are down to our last dollar. Told our wife, my wife said, baby, we're sowing our last $300. We sowed that last $300, and man, we didn't have nothing left. It was four weeks before Christmas. I needed $1,000 worth of tires, if not more. We had no money for Christmas or anything along that line. God said, I'm going to break the back of poverty. 
As soon as I sowed my seed, I started walking. God, I thank you that my harvest, somebody better catch this tonight. I thank you, God, that my harvest is coming. I thank you, God, that breakthroughs are coming. I thank you that I'll never live another day of debt in my life, God. I thank you that from this night forward, I'll thrive and I won't just survive. I thank you, God, that my debts are being canceled, that you're making a way out of no way. I thank you that favor is coming in, that blessing is coming in, in the name of Jesus, that people are writing checks unexpectedly. Thank you, God, that you're not the God of just enough, but you're the God of more than enough. I thank you, Father God, that you're sending breakthrough and blessing into our lives. By the time Christmas hit, over five thousand dollars came into our family had one of the best christmas of our lives and got the good tires too god blessed everything and we've been thriving ever since why because god is a god that said if you declare out of your mouth uh, you will create your world with your words he declared it i mean i don't know well you bet that's okay and he'll take it from you too i'm just brave enough to tell you you can lose your breakthrough you can you ain't going to lose your salvation, but you'll lose your breakthrough. Because the devil, he wouldn't come to steal if he couldn't steal. He wouldn't come to kill if he couldn't kill. He wouldn't come to destroy if he couldn't destroy. What are you declaring right now? Because if you ain't speaking nothing new, ain't nothing new coming to you. If you're not declaring, God, I thank you. When's the last time you called your children in? When's the last time you called your spouse in? When's the last time you called your ministry in? When's the last time you called your healing in? No, no, no. I didn't say pray. I said declare. There's a difference. Let me give it to you, and I'm going to pray for you. Mark 11. Bring it up for me, please, if you would. Verse number 22. Hallelujah. Somebody shout in here for me. No, 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 no. Stop, stop, stop. No, that was horrible. You wasn't ready. I need somebody to shout like they believe the breakthrough is on the horizon. Somebody, there you go. Come on. I need somebody to sound the alarm to let hell know that I'm coming. I need somebody to declare that my best and blessed days are still yet to come. I need somebody to declare my body is healed, my finances are blessed, my mind is blessed, my sleep is blessed. Somebody shout because you believe you have the victory in your life. So Jesus answered and said, have faith in God. What? That he said, if you declare it, it will manifest. For assuredly, I say to you, see what God says to you. If you say what God says to you, you'll see what he said. Whoever says to this mountain, are you a whoever? Then this applies to you. Whoever. Well, I'm black, I'm white, I'm big, I'm small, I'm short. Whoever, I made too many mistakes. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into sea and does not doubt in his or her heart, but believes those things which he says will be done. He will have whatever he says, I didn't see any prayer in there. Are you hearing me? Why? I'm going to show you. Next verse. Therefore, I say to you, what things you ask when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall. Now watch. Once you've asked, you don't ask anymore. You declare. See, you missed it, you missed it. That's why he said that afterwards. When you pray, believe that you receive them. Why? Because if you believe that you receive them, you start speaking to your mountains. Yes. God, I thank you, my body's healed. Now you come out and say, God, I said, declare that my body will be healed from this day forward. I speak it and I decree it that all my lymph nodes are healed in the name of Jesus. I declare that stage four cancer is gone, that the next time I go to the doctor, my life will be changed, that the doctors will be astounded in the name of Jesus. I declare that my debts are canceled, that checks are coming in super. Why? Because I've asked, now I can create. Mm, that's so good. This will be the last time it'll be us rusty brothers. Why? I've already asked, now it's time to create. And your words will come back to you with a response. Yeah. Jesus, help me. Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe, you receive, and you will have. God, 
I'm asking for Jimmy to get saved. Thank you, Lord. Now, Jimmy, I command you to come home in the name of Jesus. Leave that woman that don't belong to you. Get out of that jail cell. Get out of there. You're going to give your life to Jesus. I declare that Jimmy's going to preach the gospel and that he's going to raise up a righteous seed. He's going to become the dad that he was always supposed to be. I declare it in the name of Jesus. And you begin to create your world with your words. After you ask, start speaking. What do you want to have happen? Start declaring it. Why? Because your words, when you ask, watch this, your words, when you ask, it opens up the heavens. Are you ready? And then when you speak into heaven, heaven talks back to you. But if you ain't saying nothing, you ain't getting nothing. Why? Because heaven can't work with nothing. You'll never see a miracle in the scriptures that it did not require the participation of the receiver. Somebody had to do something. Even if you only got a stick, raise it up, Moses. You got to do something. Your hand may be withered. God will still tell you, stretch it out. How are we going to turn water into wine? Go get those little water pots, fill them up with water, and draw out and give to the governor of the feast. A water pot? Are you crazy? You want a miracle or not? You can seem crazy to the mind, but if you do it, it will turn. And let me tell you, I don't know what a good wine is, but there was some good wine in there. He said, you saved the best for last. And I'm telling you right now, I believe that there's a breakthrough for every single one of you if you're just willing to decree. Would you stand with me? I want to take a minute, and I just want to pray. My wife and I, we said the last Saturday of every month, we're going to declare breakthroughs over your life. You ain't in a regular house. You're not in a regular church. We're not afraid of the supernatural here. We've seen miracles, signs, wonders, healing, deliverances, breakthroughs. I believe when you come to another level, my personal expression is this, miracles not to be possible, but need to be probable. We should be, we, you know what, we really shouldn't be excited about miracles because they should be like breathing to us. Somebody gets healed, we praise God, but we should be like, I can't believe it. We should be like I was when I was in that doctor's office. You can ask my wife. I'm sitting right next to her. I said, babe, I said, I don't even need to go in there. It wasn't false humility. You can get a breakthrough in prayer that you know you have it before anybody even tells you. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. What happens? You get a foretaste of what's coming. You know it. I knew. I was sitting in there. I said, I can't wait to see them. They're all good. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe it. I knew I had it when I was walking the floor. I knew it. I knew that I knew that I knew. And I believe there's somebody in here that needs a miracle, somebody needs a breakthrough, somebody needs something to happen in their life, and you may feel like God's forgotten about you, maybe it's over with, maybe tonight encouraged your faith, you said, you know, I'm a, and listen, if you're single and you're believing God for a spouse, listen, that's why I share it all the time, I don't want anybody to feel guilty about that. Listen, when you're trying to find a good man or a good woman, it should be hard. What? Well, yeah, because if they were everywhere, they wouldn't be good. I could have married Sloppy Susie. You could have married Freaking Freddy and Slick Willie and Dirty Danny. The devil will send you all sorts of folk. The reason why, the Bible says, he that findeth a wife and obtains favor from God. If you haven't gotten my book yet and I talk about it in the wisdom seat, I talk about people talk about why am I so hidden? The reason why you're hidden is because there's so much greatness within you. Stop trying to be discovered. God's got you protected. That's why women that show all their body parts when they dress don't understand what they're attracting. You don't want a man to be attracted to you for that. Because anybody that's been married for any long period of time, if there ain't any intimacy, the sex going to get old anyways. There's only so much you can do. I'm just being real. But what keeps it new is the fact that you keep falling in love with them over and, y'all are hearing me today, over and over and over and over again. Wait for God to send you a good Holy Ghost filled man or woman. I had a guy just recently, I was just back in my hometown. And he came to me. Somebody's going somebody's to get a spouse breakthrough tonight. See, a lot of people don't want to talk about that. Oh yeah, I don't want to look like I'm not spiritual. 
What? I'll never forget my mother spoke to me. Before she passed away, she said, Jay, the reason why the devil doesn't want you to get married is not because he doesn't want you to get married. He doesn't want you to reproduce. And I said, my, now, see, it's not just about you. It's about posterity. I'll never forget the guy. I was just down there. I didn't, I didn't lose my, my thought there. I was sitting down in a restaurant. A guy came and said, Jay, I want to tell you something. You know, I know your wife's not here today, but, you know, I'm so glad. He said, you waited for real, for real. He said, you waited 12 years for her. And he said, man, did God ever bless you good? And I said, yes, he did. Hallelujah. It's so good to be able to wake up next to somebody that you think is beautiful. They ain't got to be beautiful to everybody else. They ain't got to be beautiful to you. And I tell you, a lot of people try to get me married off with somebody that loved Jesus, but you know what I'm saying? They came in there like, hey, pastor. I was like, you know, hey. Praying for you, yeah, praying for you. Don't act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Somebody said, yo, I got somebody for you. And they come in there like. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You're like, that's not what I asked for. And I had many people, and I'm serious this to, to be funny, but I had many people that came to me and said, you're too picky. That's the reason why. I'm making a lifelong commitment to you. Why should I not be picky? And I waited. And then in a moment's notice, God sent me this wonderful woman that I have here. And God knew exactly what I wanted because and what I needed. And I don't know, if there's anybody here that's single, I just feel this today, and you can believe in God for a spouse, come on up here. Come on. Come on. Come on. You want a spouse? Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. I'm believing God for a spouse. Come on. Yeah, come on. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Come on. Come on, Cletus. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's Jubilee. All the debts are canceled. Slaves go free. I, I, listen, everything we do here is prophetic. There's a reason for it. I'm not doing this just for something to do. The right man or woman is paramount. I tell you what, the stuff that we went through and the stuff that I had to go through, I'm so glad I have a warrior and not a worrier. I mean, my wife, some of y'all know she had a heart attack, still on the front line doing pro-life, all this stuff. A lot of women quit throwing in the towel and said, that's it, I'm done. Get out of here. I never should have married you in the first place. She stood right there with me. After the heart attack, she's like, I got to get back to the center. She's still there today, still preaching, doing well, better than ever, heart doing well. When our son was going to be taken out, I needed someone that would walk the floor with me. I believe that God's going to bless some people in here tonight. And after I pray for them, if you need a healing, breakthrough, whatever it is I'm praying for, just receive it. Now, what I need you to do, though, I need everybody to do this. Whatever you're believing God for, start walking the floor and declaring. Hopefully this message spoke to you that you realize I can't do nothing. I got to abide and keep declaring until it manifests in my life. See, it's amazing how many people that want to be married. Loneliness is one of the biggest pandemics of the world. People are lonely. And that with the church has made people feel, now, listen, there's a difference between being alone and being lonely. Now, you do need to become complete as an individual because your spouse will never be able to fill voids that only God can. They'll never be able to do it. If you think getting married, and another thing too, if you're dealing with lust problems and all that, are there any kids in here? Are any real young kids? Let me say, I'll speak to it in PG version. If you're constantly taking care of yourself sexually and you ain't married, you need to deal with that. Why? Because that'll burn you up in your marriage. It'll burn you up. Because you're trying to fill a void and trying to make yourself. See, we haven't learned to embrace pain in the church. It's appointed unto believers to suffer. And what we want to do, we want to go do that to make us feel better so we get temporary relief instead of learning to get eternal relief. 
So men go into pornography. Women go into pornography. They take care of themselves. They do all these types of things to make themselves feel better. Now understanding they're shortchanging what God wants to do in them and make them whole. Now watch. Why is that important? Because that is a substitute for marriage. You're trying to substitute and give yourself something out of season. Mm. Why is that so important? Because there may be time. Now watch this. Hear me. And I hope everybody catches this online. This is powerful. There may be times my spouse, watch this, I may want something from my spouse, whether it's sexually, non-sexually, whatever it is, and they are not in position to give it. If I am not whole, I will look for other things to fill that, and I won't be able to give in a time my team needs me. Because I haven't learned how to silence my own emotions and feelings and say, Jesus, you are my source. Give me what I need, and then I can get what he gives me and be what my team needs me to be. Y'all are hearing me today. This is the reason why the M word is not a good thing. Am I going to go to hell? Maybe not. But the reality is, what's going to happen, though, when you get married, you're going to keep looking for that to satisfy you and to make you whole instead of saying, no, 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 Lord, I'm going to get it from you. You give me what I need. So then when I want, I know who to get it from. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't need sex or release. I can just get what I need from God and be what my family needs me to be. So learn that. That's important. People don't talk about that in the church. That's why I want to make sure there ain't no kids in here. I don't want nobody walking out and having to get an email and say, Pastor Jay, my son was in there. So I didn't plan on going here, but this is part of the Jubilee. Is there anything you want to share? You know, Pastor Jay, as you were talking, the Lord brought to me a, back to me a picture. And um, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but there's a picture of a miner on the top line. Sister Bertie, you know what I'm talking about. And he's mining and he's mining, and he has a little bit further to go. And there's all these diamonds on the other end, okay? Then on below, there's another miner. And he has his, I guess, his little pick. And he's turned away from the diamonds. Little did he know, he was one chop away. He was one pick away from getting all those diamonds. I believe the Lord is encouraging you. You're almost there. Don't give up. Whether it's on a spouse, whether it's in a particular area of your life and a breakthrough that's needed, you're almost there. That's what the Lord wants to share with you today. Keep going. He's with you. You're almost there. And I believe that when God said the strong man was bound, he was bound and there's a release that's happening. But our release is going to come from our words. So what I want you all to do, I want you to lift up your hands. Team, can you worship for us? Turn up the keys for me if you would, sir. Make sure it's full in the house. You got a song in you? Something God's given you? You've been picking good ones lately. Lift up your hands. Just begin to worship the Lord because I believe that when we lay our hands on you, Pastor Tiff's going to start at one side. I'm going to start at another. We're going to anoint you. And we're going to believe God for supernatural things to happen in here. That Jubilee is going to hit your life. It's going to hit your family. It's going to hit you in every area. Now listen, if I, if I didn't call something for you and you need something else, come on up. That's okay. I just wanted to see the single people. I wanted to speak to them. Because I believe that God is going to do something supernatural in your lives. Don't you dare. And listen, my wife and I say this all the time. Don't you dare settle. If you don't know if it's a good man or woman, take them on a date with us. We'll go on a date with you. And that, listen, I'm not saying I'll be mean. I'll let you know honestly. And you, ladies, you should never have to pay for your own meal. And if he's living with his mama, it don't mean he ain't a good man. He just ain't ready yet. You got to have your own. I was talking to a pastor just recently. His daughter was dating a guy, and he was having a major, major meltdown. And she had to go and rescue him because he was dealing with the stress of life. I looked, and I said, listen, 
run for cover because that man can't cover you. He can't. A man has to learn to lead while he bleeds. There are times that you ain't going to have it all, man of God, and you got to be there for your wife. When you, why? That's the reason why you can't be bound by pornography because you got to learn to draw strength from him that's greater than yourself. Come on, somebody. It'll kill the life of God in you. So just be encouraged. Ladies, men, I tell you all the time, we'll, we'll get together. We'll go on a double date. We'll have fun. But when he's done, when we're done, I'll say, hey, uh, uh, listen, what's his credit score? Come on. If he's at the 500 level, your credit is your name. Who did you make a promise to? Now, that doesn't mean they can't recover. It just means have your flag up. Why am I going through all that? Because some of y'all, Mr. Mr. Wright, they're going to come. Mrs. Wright going to come. And you need to be ready and know what to look for. Date with intentionality. And when you date, don't date alone. Don't be there 12, 1 o'clock in the morning on the couch watching the movie because then the movie is going to be watching you. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Come on. And it don't matter. Listen. It don't matter if some of y'all say, well, I'm a little bit older. Listen, you get wrapped up with that hunk of love. All of a sudden, you'd be surprised how young you feel. Come on, somebody. And I'm, I'm, I know we're joking, but I mean, something's coming. I'm telling you right now. Some of y'all get ready to get blessed in a supernatural way. And if, maybe we'll talk about this in the future, about how to date again, because we don't talk enough about it. Amen? Team, let's worship. We're going to pray for you now. Come on, lift up your hands. Must have never met my God. Some may say it's over, but it was finished on the cross. Some may see broken, but the healers in the room. Some may say it's hopeless, but I know God's about to move. God's about to move. There's a beautiful
believe you're working right now. You're moving mountains, Jesus. You're parting the seas. What seemed impossible, it's possible with you, God. I believe you're moving. I believe you're moving, Jesus. You're making a way for your people. You're working it out for our good. for a minute just worship it just for a moment come on come on come on declare that right there come on declare it right now come on worship him come on take a minute favor look at somebody and declare to them right now say you are a miracle. come on find somebody say you are now declare we are miracles we are a miracle come on yes, you are. We, come on declare it we are a miracle come on we are a miracle Yeah. 
atmosphere creates your world. We are your hands together and bless the Lord. Come on. Come on. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. If you believe in miracles, come on. Come on. As you open up your mouth, you're recreating your world with your words. The devil has told you to shut your mouth, but God is saying, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed declare we're miracles. Let the redeemed of the Lord say we are healed. That we are blessed. Come on, I feel something rising. Come on, I feel something rising. I feel something rising in this house. Come on. I feel it rising. Come on, I feel faith rising, victory rising, breakthrough rising, healing, provision, deliverance, salvation, miracles are rising in this house. Hallelujah. Every debt is being canceled. Everything done wrong to us and that we've done wrong, you're making it right. We declare a miracle. We declare that from now to the end of the year that things will accelerate, that doors will open, that ways are being made, harvests are coming, seeds are being sown, doors are opening up. Father, I thank you provision is coming. Demons are being cast out. Slaves are going free. Family members are coming in. And promotions are coming in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare it. We believe it. That by the end of the year, not one of us will be the same way that we came. But we will be different. We will see our miracles. We will affect change in this city. The gospel will go out. Our young people will be set on fire. Our children will be filled with the Holy Holy Ghost, demons will flee, breakthroughs will happen, things are going to transpire in the spirit. We believe it and we receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, thank God one more time if you believe it in this house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that it's happening right now in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I declare the blessing over every person's life that's watching by way of live stream, television, YouTube, Facebook, on TV, the Faith and Family channel, wherever they're watching it, that from this night forward, their life will never be the same, that we are going tonight from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord, that, Lord, we're walking out with a new vocabulary, 
Lay your hands on your mouth right now. And Father, I release a new vocabulary into their lives in the name of Jesus. That what they speak, they will see and will create. And Father, I thank you that even as we go throughout this week, we will begin to see the supernatural in all of our lives. And that we will never, ever, ever be the same. And we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said... Amen. Listen, don't forget to sign up for Wednesday night. We'll be going through the book of Ephesians. Next Saturday, we have our special guest speaker, Pastor Jordan Parks. If you're going to go to the gala, see Pastor Tiff as well. It's going to be a great week. Don't forget to declare out of your mouth what you want God to do in and through your life. Your breakthrough is upon you. Sign up for the spiritual gifts class. We'll be here next Saturday at 4.30 before our service, getting you ready for that cross training and water baptism. Get all those in place. If you want to be a member here and want to make another level your home, sign up for that as well. We'll be doing that in August as well. God bless you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Go get them in Jesus' name.